right, so yes, my name is Hannah Tangen, and in lieu of Halloween just ending, I am going to play you guys a clip, just a little background behind this clip. I was sitting in my car trying to generate content for this very show, and something, let's just say something happened. So with that in mind, hit it! Yeah, so I've had a really big crush on uh, Keanu Reeves lately. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel... <laughs> I feel, I'm, I'm getting over it, I'm getting over it a little bit, but at one point, oh my gosh, I think I just saw a ghost. <laughs> it was a reflection in my mirror. Oh my goodness, I know, did not see a ghost. All right, um, yeah, so, oh my gosh, is, it, oh, is that a ghost? Okay. <laughs> Keanu Reeves reaching out to me in solidarity. You're like, hey, I love you too. <laughs> no, I was I was very much mistaken. Um, but yeah, spooky season that just happened. It's probably one of my favorite times of year. Um, my favorite season is not winter. Um, and for those of you whose favorite season is winter, I, I mean, congrats. <laughs> You're here, so I mean, that's good for you, I guess. But no, for me, my favorite season has always been summer, uh, partially because my birthday falls on the summer months. And I love having a summer birthday, it's great. You got the weather on your side most of the time, unless there's a rainstorm. You can maybe have your birthday party outside. Uh, but I've always been a twinge jealous of the people with uh, winter and fall birthdays, especially during elementary time, because they would get to make a big show out of their birthday. They'd like bring donuts, they'd bring cupcakes, the teacher would give you a pencil with happy birthday on it, you'd feel like I'm a million bucks, and then they'd say happy birthday to you. And they'd just like soak it all in, and, and then you'd send out invites to your class, and you'd have a birthday party on the weekend, because everyone was in proximity. Uh, but in the summer months when you have your birthday, you don't know where anyone is. You know, your best friend's probably out visiting our grandma in Texas or something, like you have no idea where anyone is. So for me, I would be sitting all alone in a sand castle on my, on my birthday, and I'd gaze out for miles at a desolate landscape, no faces in sight. <laughs> and I'd send out a call to my trusty falcon, Marianne. Oh! <laughs> She'd come and swoop down on my arm, and I'd go, Marianne, send out the call. Gather the troops, search far and wide, because on Thursday at dusk, we're going to have a pizza birthday slumber ball pit party at the castle of Charles E. Cheese! <laughs> A.K.A. Marianne the Falcon was my mom. <laughs> and I'd send her off! <laughs> She'd go send out the call and, uh, honestly, who knows who would show up? Because, again, this is summertime, but... Um, no, I still love summer very much, and, uh, I actually did something this summer that I'd never done before, which was pretty cool. Yes, I uh, kicked the bucket list and slapped a wild animal on the butt. <laughs> yeah, no, it was great. Um, my mom and I uh, did the ultimate western road trip, uh, but it was like the pedal to the metal abridged version where you visit five states in seven days and end up at the end of the week back in North Dakota which I do not recommend if you enjoy relaxation. It was crazy, uh, but also very fun. And on day five, we're in California. And we're at the Redwood National Forest, just staring at these giant trees. May I say big tree energy? <laughs> and we're like staring at these trees, and I'm like, Mom, at this point, we've traveled over a thousand miles. Let's go see the ocean, which is a 10 minute drive away. So we show up at the ocean, we set the scene, it's kind of a foggy, rainy, Pacific, Northern California day, and we're not even at this beach for like five minutes when this thing starts to emerge from the water. I'm like, what? And it was LeBron James. Um, <laughs> no, it, it was a seal, it was a seal. It was this really tiny seal, so cute. It had these giant black eyes, and they just stare up at you, and be scratching his neck with his back flipper, and I'd be like, oh my gosh, you're so cute, you look like an alien, like, <laughs> get back to Area 51, you cutie, you don't belong here. Um, and my mom and I, 
immediately start to get a little concerned because seals are usually located among other seals in groups called pods or bobs or herds or harems or rookeries. And this guy ain't in any of them. <laughs> so my mom and I are like, well, what do we do? And at this point, there's starting to be a small uh, crowd gathering around this seal. And so we're all staring at it. And my mom decides to make the very ill-advised decision, I do not recommend this to anyone, to take her jacket, throw it over the seal, and scoop it up. <laughs> and we're all like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? You're going to get in massive trouble. Put it down. But Madonna and Seal Child over here is like, <laughs> Hannah, call a number. Hannah, I don't know what number you call, but just look online. There's some rescue number somewhere. Just call it. So I'm like, okay. So I search the internet. I call like three different numbers in the area. No one's picking up. It's not even a weird time of the day on like a weekend. It's, it's operating hours, so I don't know why anyone's picking up. Anyone's not picking up, but um, at this point, we're like, well, crap. What do we do? And I'm like, you know what? The mom's probably off hunting somewhere. She just left her seal on the beach uh, as like a babysitting mechanism. She'll probably come back. <laughs> uh, so I'm like, we can't put it in our tub. We can't take it home. So I was like, you're right. We've done everything we can do. So I gave it a little good luck pat on the butt for like, good luck, buddy. And <laughs> set it down and we head off to eat. Um, but 10 minutes later, my mom gets the great idea to call the off-brand SeaWorld in the area. She's like, Hannah, they deal with seals. They'll know what to do. So I'm like, yeah, you're right. So I call that number. They recommend us another number to call. Call that number. They recommend us another number to call a text with a photo and description of the seal. So we have reached the right number, finally, after like a half hour. Okay, so I send in a photo of the seal, description. Not even two minutes later, I get a reply. This is an endangered Guadalupe fur seal from Mexico. It has swam over a thousand miles to be here, and we need to rescue it immediately. <laughs> oh my gosh! So they're like, "Where is it?" So I'm like, not knowing the topography of Northern California, <laughs> take my finger, stick it on a map, and take a photo, being like, "It was here." <laughs> <laughs> We have a team coming out immediately. They'll meet us at the beach. So the SEAL Team 6 is coming, guys. <laughs> this is serious business. We race back out to the beach. We run out. We meet them. Truck pulls up. They got the SEAL logo on the side of the truck. They got nets. They got hats. They are official. Um, they're like, where is he? Uh, 